Well, hello, friends, neighbors. John, your whiskey neighbor here, and welcome down to the Whiskey Nook. Uh, it is a Sunday, and I have samples. Uh, Ray from Texas managed to figure out how to get me several amazing bottles. So today we're going to look at a couple of big bourbons. Uh, this first one oh, uh, is uh, Old Elk, but it's their barrel proof or their barrel strength. Uh, so it's a, it's actually a, um, uh, a store pick from Total Wine. So I think it's about 56%. Uh, of course, Old Elk, well, not of course. This one's a weeded release. And uh, then we'll talk about number 14. Uh, of course, Still Austin. I wanted to pick another cast drink. So this is Still Austin. Uh, also, this is from Texas and Old Elk, which is actually a sourced bourbon. So we'll talk about that when we get back. Why don't you pour something, pour something big if you have it. And we'll chat some big, big bourbon samples when we get back. Three, four. Well, thanks for staying with me, especially after such a, a mumbled opening there. Uh, just want to let you know again, these these samples are provided uh, by friend Ray online. Uh, you know, we met through this way, and you've just been such a gentleman, saying, "Hey, how can I uh, how can I support? It's fun to watch every now and then, and and I really appreciate the gift of some samples and samples I can't get. So let's first talk about Old Elk. So this one is, um, as I said, it's a it's a single barrel pick. It's 56.55%. Um, boy, what would that be? Around 113 proof. And uh, this uh, selection of Old Elk is, they're weeded. And the weeded, they do about a 45% wheat, 51% uh, corn. That's right, I was trying to get like, because I remember, I think about 4% barley, but a lot of wheat on here. And if you don't know about Old Elk, uh, we can't get it where I am in my market, so again, thanks uh, for sending it this way. But um, it's sourced, but it's it's got a lot of cred behind it. The um, is it Greg Metz? I think I'm trying to think of the master distiller that was at MGP for like I don't know, 38 years, 35 years. I can't remember, but 30 some years. Like just incredible cred. I mean, if you don't know about MGP and the volume of a variety of liquid they put out, and uh, and was it Kurt someone? Uh, I'll put it down below. You know, who wanted to found the old elk, managed to bring them over, and they, uh, I still believe they're sourcing their stuff, but but they might have their own distillery now in Colorado. I, I should have done some more history, but either way, this is old elk, weeded, barrel-proof bourbon. Um, happy to give it a try with you. I, I love scotch, uh, but I've been drinking scotch for a few weeks, and I thought, I gotta shift into bourbon for a little bit, and this is so rich, so thick, it is sweet, but in a in a in a strong oaked way. Like I just I mean right away coming into bourbon like this and I'm and hot. Like I haven't had any bourbon in a while. This is this is oaky, uh thick, cherry. Oh burnt toffee, treacle, molasses, just Really awesome on the nose. Let's try it on the palate. Cheers. Ooh. So that really lit up my palate. Surprisingly, how much it didn't burn me at 56. I mean, sure, there's alcohol heat. There's pepper across the palate, but for me, that was pepper and cinnamon. But, you know, it also was, you know, quite a strong alcohol. Um, the cherry backed off. It's now more like a red apple. Uh, still lots of good chewy toffee. Um, and, and a bit of a creaminess or a, a crust. Like I often, when I'm, when I'm thinking of big bourbons like this that have that creaminess or that breadiness, it goes to me toward a crust because I'm getting the cinnamon and I think of like a nice fresh cinnamon bun. And you know that that quality of, of that um, that pastry that you get in there? This has some of that nice pastry, beautiful cinnamons. 
Um, the toffee's backed away a little bit, a little bit more vanillas. The cherries turn into more of an apple. Um, and the finish is where you're getting, you know, just that nice back with oak, um, but actually quite balanced. I am really impressed. Now, you better take it with a grain of salt. As I said, I haven't really had any bourbon in a while and what little nips I've had haven't been of this caliber. So this is a delightful bourbon. And the weeded nature, although, you know, I talked about some of that spicing, played more into cinnamons and less into cracked peppers, which I'm going to attribute to, you know, that we're a ton of weed in here instead of some of that rye balance. So this is just a monster sample. So the other sample I, I picked from the box uh, was uh, Still Austin. Now, Still Austin, uh, the musician, uh, it's out of Texas. It's all Texas greens. Um, I think this is the same mash bill as the musician, which would be about 70% uh, corn, 25% rye, uh, and a balance that'll be about five percent barley uh, all grains from texas now the musician is shockingly young it's like two years and and one of the best bourbons i've had this year that is a very different nose than the old elk even though this is oh i didn't say it. uh the still austin's 59 percent 118 proof This definitely is speaking a little more rye. And in this context, it's almost a little bit of mint, uh, but certainly a little bit of um, little bit of herbal or a little bit of grass. It's not the first thing. I probably would have just talked about some sweetness and some, some almost sour fruits, like almost a lemon. But when I compare it to the old elk, that's when I'm, I, I would identify it as a little bit of grass, you know, a little bit of lemongrass in there, right? So it's still got a lot of that, that, that high sweetness, you know, 70% backbone of corn. It's not, it's in the same family, but it is a little sharper um, and a little more like it kind of pulls the edges of my eyes in a little bit. All right, got to try it on the palate. Cheers. Oh, I really like the palate of Still Austin. Crank it up to 118 proof and it just speaks. It is um, a very savory bourbon. Even some of the fruiting that I talked about the nose and I didn't talk too much. For me, in the palate, it is all oaks and, and, um, and cinnamons, but now peppers and... Um, and I said that, that sour... Oh, and drying. Drying a little bit in the palate that makes you kind of make those noises I try not to on the mic but it, but it makes you kind of think of the next sip like what's coming next it also burns a little bit more down down the throat which could mean it's a little bit younger um right it's got a little bit but but to me it's a warm warm kind of rye hug oh, I'm gonna try another sip Yeah, um, definitely uh, dominated by cask and rye for me in this bourbon. It's it's um, a little barky, a little little rough, but rough in a good way. Like that edge of even the char that's coming through. I don't know what they use on their barrels, like what level of char, but but I feel like you get a, almost a little bit of phenol. Like maybe I'm coming from Scotchland, but you, know, you get a little bit of that that char that comes through with the rye spicing. Man, I like both of these samples a lot. Again, please, grain of salt. And and I, I just poured them with you. I let them open up for a few minutes and I'm sharing first thoughts. This old elk, obviously I'm going to myself try it with a bit of water. I won't take the time with you guys, um, but it it really did have a little bit of a pastry creamy note. I'm going to attribute to wheat, but that made it, um, I mean, this is not relaxed at 56 or so percent, but it, it did have more cream and a little more uh, fruit. Whereas the still Austin, was stronger, a little sharper, but not in a negative way. Just, just a little, um, you know, a punchier and oakier and spicier for sure. Wow, these were great samples. Thanks for joining me. I uh, hope you guys uh, had, a, had a good weekend. This is Sunday, of course, Sunday samples. Um, and, and I hope you have a good week ahead of you. Long-term viewers, you're like, well, what'd you do with your background? <sighs> you know, uh, I'm gonna call this the nook again because it's gonna be how I'm gonna ride out the winter. I had visions of rebuilding, like, like,
putting real wood on the walls, building a bar, you know, let's make this official. And so I was resisting, uh, you know, just putting up a few bottles and some tins, but there's not enough time. So I'm just going to call this uh, the Whiskey Nook 2 or just the Whiskey Nook again. I have put up some things that make me feel better, a couple of bottles that I'm working on, a couple of tins that, that either I've talked to or will talk to you because it's kind of fun to have them out in the background. So that's just to all the long-term viewers. Thanks for sticking through right to the end and thanks for subscribing. You guys really are the best. One day we'll have to figure out how to have a bit better of a party together, but thanks for joining me. You guys have a great week. Thank you.